uh, hello, we are at the Uzi event uh, and we are talking with Susan Weinchek. Hello, Susan. Hello. Uh, you got a really interesting presentation today regarding uh, our history uh, of interacting with uh, different devices. Mm -hmm and you got a really good feedback from the audience. I should say, what do you think is the most relevant uh, event or things that happened so far in, in our technology regarding this interaction with, with computers? Well, you know, I think um, because we developed the screens so early, I think we got stuck in screen and keyboard mode. And, you know, like even now, we we can talk to the computers, there's so much more we can do, but what kind of our expectation is, but there'll always be a screen and a keyboard, right? And I think it's hard for us to lose that. I mean, you know, the screens are getting smaller and the keyboards <laughs> are getting smaller and still we must have, you know, the screen and the keyboard. Uh, and so I, I think that's been, that was a really significant development that was really useful at the time but maybe it's kept us stuck for, for decades. I see. Yeah, yeah, good, really good point. And uh, when, when people are interacting with devices, what they should consider from this perspective? And you mentioned about the human interactivity. Do you think we can add some more human to our devices, our daily devices? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think we've, you know, the whole field of human factors and taking the human factor into account during design has been growing and becoming very, um, you know, it's much more prevalent now than it used to be. But um, there's always more we can do. And I sometimes get concerned with some of our um, new processes. You know, everyone wants to innovate so fast. And so we have, you know, Agile and we have Lean and, and those are, are really useful in terms of developing new things. But sometimes it means that we don't take enough time to consider the human aspect and really build the best human design uh -huh. into the products. Okay. I see. A any, I mean, y you show us some example like uh, the, the Internet Symphony, for example. <laughs> Right. Uh, wh yeah. What do you think we should consider? Like, uh, give, you know, like, uh, what did you see as an interaction that should be in different from what we know to, to the people? Well, for instance, we know that um, uh, if that it's really easy for humans to build what's called a conditioned response. It's, this goes back to, if you've studied any psychology, it goes back to Pavlov and, and oh. uh, the, the dog salivating when the bell rings. Well, you know, we are very, it's very easy for us to become conditioned to the visual and auditory alerts from our devices. Uh, that's one reason they're so, you know, some people say it's all very addictive. And so if you're someone who makes an app, you may think that's a good thing, but maybe it's not such a good thing for the humans, right? So maybe it'd be better to design with less of those alerts. And you can say, oh, well, you can turn the alerts off, but you know, the, the, the normal mo default mode is that all the alerts are on. So to take into account not just um, what's best in terms of getting people attached and addicted to your product, but to really take into account what's best for the human. We know that when you do a lot of um, what's called task switching, uh, I don't call it multitasking because okay. that doesn't really <laughs> exist, you're switching, that makes people tired and it makes you less productive. Um, so maybe it's not a good idea to build all of this into our devices and our designs. You know. Could we turn it around and really design what's best for the human? Hmm, sounds really interesting. And uh, yeah, this might change a lot. It would change a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, imagine having a cell phone that doesn't always beep and chirp and, you know, <laughs> lights go up. I agree. And uh, in your presentation, you mentioned about the F Ford era where we'll have more human direct communication or more human-like communication, if you can say more about this, if you didn't cover yeah, it. Yeah, I talked about the four, what I consider the four eras of eras, um, time frames of human computer interaction. And, and the one win right now has to do with relationships 
with technology, relationships with robots, relationships with uh, you know AI and 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 smart machines, and um, we need to think about what we want the relationships to be. So sometimes um, I feel like we we just we assume that technology is going off in this direction and and we have to follow it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we could um, we could create the the relationships we want rather than just accepting the relationships that are kind of provided by the technology itself. Because you know humans are very social and we create relationships with everything, including our devices. We're going to have relationships with robots and all of these machines. Um, you know, there's even some interesting things that show that if you give um, if you have a driverless car and it talks to you, if you give the voice a name, then people trust the car's decisions more. I see. Yeah. So you know, we're bu- you build a relationship because that's how humans are. Yeah, totally. I have two daughters, and they are naming each you know <laughs> small pet or no whatever it toy is, they give has it a, a name. name. Right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Us more mature, we are not doing this anymore. <laughs> so yeah, we should go back. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so yeah, thank you, Susan. It was nice yeah, talking thank to you. you very thank much. you.